Yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review. Today we're going to be doing my comic pull list for the week, as well as news, updates, questions, answers, and everything else that I throw in these videos. As you can see, I'm just waking up. I actually got some sleep this weekend. It was very nice. Been working hard uh, the past week, two weeks or so, at my job. So it's kind of cool to have a day or two when I can sleep in. To like 7.30. You know you're getting old when sleeping in until 7.30 is like extreme and dangerous. But that's neither here nor there. We're talking about comic books today. And we might as well start where we always start. With just a little bit of Batman in our life. With Batman and Nightwing. Issue number 23. And now this is concluding the five stages of grief. Uh, and basically it is acceptance it's bruce coming to terms with the fact that no matter what he did no matter how he approached it probably wouldn't be able to have saved damien actually damien's fate really lied in the hands of two people talia ghoul and alfred pennyworth and nightwing is the one that kind of makes bruce accept this makes bruce realize this and how does he do it he goes along with bruce See, Dick has been with Bruce almost longer than anyone, the only exception really being Alfred. And, well, Dick actually knows Bruce really well. He knows that arguing and debating with Bruce isn't going to, well, do anything. You have to go along with him and make him realize things for himself. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good, I do like how Dick interacts in this with Bruce and how he kind of, you know... Dick lost something here, too. It's not just Bruce that lost his son. Dick lost his partner. Uh, Dick and Damien were the dynamic duo for some time. So maybe, in a way, Dick was looking into seeing if he could have saved Damien, too. Not just to help bring Bruce back from the, the brink of depression, but to see if anything he could have done. Because if you remember reading those issues, issue number eight of Batman Incorporated, Dick was the one that kind of let Damien fail. Dick was there when Damien was fighting the the, the clone baby faced thingy majiggy, you know, the Leviathan. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see how Dick interacts with Bruce in this and also how Dick plays things off in this. Uh, has a very nice conclusion at the very end uh, with Alfred and Bruce and Bruce coming to a really startling revelation that it really wasn't him that lost Damien, or just him that lost Damien. You know, someone else lost a son. And that's someone else with Alfred. And I think no one blames himself more for this than Alfred. Because, to be honest, Alfred's the one that let Damien go. Um, bad. The only bad I could really say is, uh, the five stages of grief, it would have been nice if it was done bi-weekly, maybe. Um, uh, I'm ready for the next story arc. I'm ready to see where the story goes. I know the next issue is, uh, well, we're having a uh, villain month, and then after that is Batman and Two Face, and then I hope eventually this turns back to Batman and Robin, and I am interested to see who they will have as Robin. I think it's going to be Carrie Kelly. If that's the case, hey, I'm all for it, but I'm interested to see who they have be the next Robin. On a whole, a four point five out of five. <laughs> Moving on to Red Hood, the Outlaws. Oh, Arsenal, I love your 90s costume. It really is awesome. With his 9 million guns. Um, it is basically Arsenal going in, trying to kick ass and take names. And basically trying to save his friend, Jason. Because you have to understand, Arsenal needs Jason and Corey. Um, Arsenal is a recovering addict. Not just that, but he's kind of had a crappy life. And these two are basically his stability. He's substituting drugs with these characters. Not only does he love them, but he needs them. He's dependent on them. So he's going all out to get them back. Um, and boy, does he go all out to get one of them back. Um, however, it is going to be the Untitled versus... Or is it the All Cast? It's the Untitled. Versus the League of Assassins in a big epic throwdown. And Jason has picked a side. Which side will he be on? Gonna have to read and see. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. 
good. I really do like the utilization in the League of Assassins in here. I particularly like how Cheshire is. Cheshire is fun. But not just that, it's good to see a competent Lady Chief in the New 52, as well as Bronze Tiger's new look and dynamic. Um, I approve of all. But to be fair, those are the three that I approve of. To kind of throw bad in there, the rest of the League of Assassins really aren't that impressive. It would have been nice if we saw some familiar faces like Onyx show up. And I'm not saying these characters weren't used beforehand. Some of them might have been, but I just don't care for them. Maybe their power sets or what their deal is. I would have liked to see, like, good old-fashioned League of Assassins. Assassins. Um, maybe even Merlin could have showed up. Although, did Merlin show up in the 52? I think he did in Batman Incorporated. Hmm. Yeah, he did. Anyways. Uh, so, that's a good... Uh, the dialogue was spot on, and it really did have some uh, nice art. Bad is, uh, I want there to be some kind of ending soon with the story arc. It's fun, it's enjoyable, but I hope next issue is the last. Uh, it dragged on a bit, but besides that, uh, 4.5 out of 5 also. Good issue. Batwoman, issue number 23. Boy, oh boy. Uh, shit's getting real on all angles. Um... Batwoman has to do her mission, and her main mission is she has to take out Batman, plain, flat, and simple. But before she goes on this mission, she does to herself what was done to Maggie Sawyer, um, her wife, or her, they're not married yet, they're fiancés, uh, to her fiancé, and she injects herself with the fear toxin. And I don't want to give too much away, but what happens between her, Maggie, and what happens while she's in the fear toxin is just... Amazing, touching, loving, and scary all at once. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, in addition to that, it, it's, it's, and I'm kind of just transitioning into the good, the bad, and one of the night you should get it. Um, Firehawks, badass in this. She interrogates slash tortures, although it doesn't really torture. It's more interrogation. There's a difference between the two. But it, it, it's cool to see what she does to get the answers that she wants. And her taking more of a proactive role than just being a sidekick. On a whole, whether or not you should get it, uh, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, five out of five. Batwoman has been a fantastic title. Uh, like I said, once this story really got its, uh, once this comic got its footing, it, it became an all-star comic. Next is Birds of Prey, issue number 23. Regulus slash the um, Basilisk is after Black Canary and the Birds of Prey. Uh, while this is happening, we get to see the many different fantasies and what-ifs with the Birds of Prey. But we also get a shocking revelation, or um, at least Black Canary does, exactly where her husband is and whether he's really alive or not. What is Regulus's ultimate plan? I don't know. I'm going to have to read next issue. But good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. Um, some nice twists and shockers of moments. Uh, I really do like Regulus being a villain for uh, Birds of Prey. And I do like the fact that it's going to be now Strikes and uh, Barbara Gordon that's going to be kind of showcased a little bit more in the next few issues. Bad is the dream sequence stuff. Well, fun. It would have been nice if we had, like, that's a page per person. We had like two, three pages per person. Uh, it's good to kind of divulge into the deep inner feelings of these characters, but I felt as though it went on for a little too long. I think Black Canary had like three pages to herself. Let me just take a look. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Black Canary had, and I'm going to say Black Canary and Condor kind of shared one because one, two, three, four, four pages for Black Canary and Condor. One, Two pages for Batgirl, and then one, two, three for Strikes. The only one I'm okay with is Strikes having it because she she's not a flushed out character yet. Um, but other than that, uh, it would have been nice if we a page per person. But besides that, uh, this was a solid issue. Four out of five. I I do love Birds of Prey, and this is one of my my more favorite takes of Birds of Prey, probably. On to a new series, uh, spinning out of Batman Beyond, which I think is now ending, is Batman Beyond Universe, issue number one. 
Like Batman Beyond Unlimited, this was originally a digital first. Kyle Higgins, the writer of Nightwing, jumps on as the writer of Batman. Uh, but we actually get twofold stories in here, similar to um, how we did with the original Batman Beyond Unlimited. Uh, basically, this first story is dealing with Terry McGinnis. That is the Kyle Higgins story. And it's kind of a story that deals with a murder, well, a death which could possibly be a murder, and uh, him pulling on all the old Batman members, from having Barbara Gordon helping him out, to Nightwing helping him out, to even having Batman helping him out, uh, trying to figure out exactly what this murder is. While this is going on, uh, we find as though Terry's regular life is in turmoil because he's committing so much to the Batman persona. The second story deals with Superman and Superman's powers going out of whack, and we get to learn a little bit more about Superman's past in the Beyond universe. What happened to Lois, uh, what he does on his off time, uh, what's his ultimate goals and feelings for certain things, and we get to, of course, see more of the Justice League. Not just do we get to see a lot more of the Justice League, but we get to see some other members show up, like Shazam shows up. Huzzah! Um, Mr. Miracle shows up. A good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, the art in the first story was really good. I think it, it was a great, great transition of uh, the art style that we had on the cartoon show to a comic book art style. It worked out very well. Um, as well as Terry McGinnis is shown to be uh, young, youthful, and a badass at the same time. Making mistakes, but making mistakes in a likable way. Uh, although I do have to say the second story was the one I liked a little bit better because it divulged a little bit more into Superman and exactly where he stands in life. Plus, we get to see a lot more of the Justice League. To be honest, I would actually like it if we had a separate comic for the Justice League so we can expand on it more. I feel as though these characters aren't fully flushed out. I mean, we all know who Big Barda and who Mr. Miracle and Captain Marvel are, but like Warhawk and Aqua Girl and uh, the new Green Lantern and... Um, oh, what's the, what's the new Adam's name? Um, oh, that's gonna bother the living hell out of me. Uh, Micron. Um, all these other new ones that were created, really, just for that episode of The Calling, uh, that has transitioned into this comic. I would have liked to see more of them. Uh, put it on that side, this is a solid start, good issue. Um, I would say pick it up as a 5 out of 5 recommendation. Next is Batman 66, issue number 2. Um, with the 66 reviews, I'm going to basically say this. If you love the TV show or if you just love reading anything Batman in general, this was a fun issue. Not quite as good as the first issue, but uh, still really fun. Do recommend it. There's two stories in this. The Emperor Penguin story, wow, that's really being thrown around a lot lately, uh, is the better of the two stories. But uh, really fun, really good art, and uh, really is enjoyable. Uh, it's my detox comic. It's a comic I read after I get all these uh, heavy series comics, and then I get Batman 66 or Batman in Little Gotham and just get them read away. New Guardians, issue number 23. So, Relic is on the move. Quite literally, Relic is on the move. Uh, I, I find it interesting we're going to have the Lights Out storyline going on, and in the Lights Out storyline, we're... we're I thought the Green Lantern Titus were going to be a little separate for a bit, but they're not really that they're all converging together. I do like the fact that uh, with this, you can read New Guardians on its own and not have to worry about a thing. But reading in the grand scheme of things works out too. So that's nice. But uh, basically, Kyle's doing everything he can to stop uh, Relic. And unfortunately, everything he can may not be enough because a Lantern core gets scrubbed from the face of the universe. Yes, one of the landing cores goes down. Which landing core is it? Indigo? Blue? Red? Yellow? Green? Sapphire? Orange? Well, orange would be easy. LaFreeze, come here. Come here, buddy. Boom! Oh, no more orange core. That would be interesting. If LaFreeze died, where would his ring go? Does it recalculate and find the next greediest person in the world or the universe like Green Lantern Ring does or a Sapphire Ring or... Uh, I mean, that would be an interesting thought. Anyways, uh, really shocker of an ending, and I, I do feel as though this uh, title is starting to get some steam. Five out of five. Um, it's like I said when Justin Jordan first jumped on, it's going to take time, but once that starts building, it's going to start building. Pandora, Trinity of Sin, issue number three. 
Um, to be honest, you shouldn't read this issue until you read Justice League of Justice League Dark issue number twenty three, which is um, Training War Part Five. Uh, this is basically one we get a lot to see a lot more background of or development of. Pandora as a character, but this takes place during the big battle that happens in Trinity War Part 5. I don't want to reveal too much of it if you're not, if you haven't read Trinity War yet, um, because to really go into this plot, I would be giving up some uh, major plot points for Trinity War. All I have to say is uh, Pandora finds a special weapon that she can use against the Seven Deadly Sins. What weapon is that? Herself. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you get. Oh, that's good. I do like Pandora as a character and the development of the character. Bad is, uh, unless you're really reading Trinity War, it does kind of uh, damper whether or not you should pick this up. If you read Trinity War, definitely pick this up. If you're not, then maybe I would hold out and wait till a, a good jumping on point. I had to say Pandora is a strong comic, a very strong comic. If you did decide to get this, whether you're reading Trinity War Trinity War or not, I don't think it would hurt your reading too much, but it definitely does help the experience if you read this after Justice League Dark, or Ju yeah, Justice League Dark 23, so I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. I still recommend picking up Pandora, but that issue might be a little confusing for people that aren't doing the crossover event. Animal Man, number 23. Uh, Buddy Baker is slowly going into more and more depression. He needs his family, and his family is not there. While this is going on, Little Wing is still trying to get her brother back to life. And Brother Blood is invading the Red. Yeah, is that enough to make you want to pick up the comic? All that stuff right there? You should, because Animal Man is a fantastic comic. It always has been. It has continuously been fantastic. Five out of five. That's it. Uh, but to be honest, I really do like the fact that they're using Brother Blood. I think he's a good character to use for a villain. In addition to that, not only because he has the establishedness of being a DC villain since the 1980s, but he just works well with the concept of the Red. Uh, but in addition to that, there is a major twist at the end. Five out of five. Superman Unchained issue number three. Another comic that is starting to get its uh, footing. Uh, Scott Snyder is really kind of divulging more into uh, what he's doing for the story. Who the Wraith is and exactly what this organization that uh, General Lane is controlling is. And how does General Lane view Superman, which was beautifully handled. General Lane says Superman is the biggest mass murderer in the world because he has the superhero. He can do something, and he just does it. Not for everyone, which was a great way of delivering that. Um, and the Wraith is turning out to be an interesting character, also, to say the least. I, I don't want to give too, too much away in this, but what I can say, other than the fact that the art is, you know, my favorite artist, Jim Lee, and the writing was superb, I think Lois Lane is handled well in this, too. Uh, she's going, to, she's in this plane, and instead of calling for Superman, like, cliche she always does. She takes a handle of things, and it shows how strong of a character Lois Lane is, too. Uh, yeah, five out of five. Pick it up. Supergirl, issue number 23. Uh, Cyborg Superman wants to find out who he is, and he does at the end of this issue. And boy, will you never see it coming. You will never guess who Cyborg Superman really is. I'm serious. Uh, if anyone can truly guess who he is, I will give you a fucking round of applause because I didn't see it coming. Uh, Supergirl basically fights for her life, and at the end of it, she might lose hers in order for Cyborg Superman to get his back. But is it the right move for Cyborg Superman? We didn't see. A uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. The twist at the end was uh, very well delivered. Uh, Cyborg Superman is a great villain and character, and we all know he's working with someone in the background. My bets are on Brainiac, and the reason why I say that is because I read the solicits for the past few weeks. Uh, but no, in all honesty, he, he is working with Brainiac in the background. You get a bit of a feel of that. In addition to that, the art is good, and it's cool seeing Supergirl fight for her life. I don't know if I would give this a 5 out of 5, but it's still a really good issue. 4.5 out of 5. Uh, um, Justice League of America's Vibe, issue number 7. 
So Vibe is also fighting for his life in the circus. No, no, not the circus where Dick Grayson's at. The circus in uh, Argus. And while this is going on, interdimensional battling against his brother and, well, Gypsy getting caught in between. Oh, and did I forget to say Darkseid's daughter is on loose? I really want to see what Darkseid's daughter looks like. But yet, I kind of want to see Darkseid's mate that he had with his daughter. That must have been really painful. Anyways, fact of the matter remains is uh, shit gets real. Uh, really do like the characters in this. Really do like the atmosphere and feel of this comic. Uh, Bad is using his brother so early, I feel as though, unless there's a greater, greater purpose to it, I feel as though it's kind of a cheap way of getting like, oh, shock value. But, in saying that, I still like this issue. Four out of five. That's some pretty good stuff this week. Pretty good stuff this week. Last two comics. Wonder Woman, issue number 23, which has one of the best Wonder Woman co uh, covers. Uh, my three favorite Wonder Woman covers would be this, the one where she's shooting the two guns, and the one where you see Orion's mask and she's about to punch it. Really great covers. Uh, and the cover is just the beginning because everything in this is great. Epic fight against the firstborn. Everyone dishes it out. Massive twist at the end. How Wonder Woman goes at the first one, you will be absolutely jaw-dropped at. Oh, and just because it's the first round doesn't mean it's the end of the fight. Because boy, oh boy, does shit get real. Five out of fucking five. This will be my pick of the week. I'm, I'm spoiling that right now for you. It's that good of a comic. If you're not picking up Wonder Woman, you're missing out on something truly great. Brian Azzarello's run on Wonder Woman has become one of my favorites. And lastly, Justice League Dark, issue number 23. Uh, so we continue the Trinity War stuff. Wonder Woman wants to have the... Well, Wonder Woman grabs a skull, gets possessed, and about everyone else grabs a skull and gets possessed. Uh, there's only one person in this comic that can pick up the uh, skull and not get possessed, and it's not Pandora, which is actually very nice to see who it was. Um, things are starting to converge. We're starting to find out who the true villains are, and we're starting to get an idea of their motives. Uh, exactly what's going to happen to the Justice Leagues? I'm going to have to read and see. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. I like to throw back to some of the old magical characters from the New 52. From Amethyst to Andrew Bennett to Animal Man to Swamp Thing to everyone else. Uh, There's a nice little homage to uh, many characters of the magical universe of the DCU who aren't with us anymore because their comics got canceled. Uh, good utilization of Shazam, and I do like the fight between everyone, which was fun. Uh, just don't touch that damn skull, people. It's not bloody hell. Uh, bad, I feel as though this story, we have one issue left. For something called Trinity War, there's not a lot of war. There's a lot of fighting, but there's not a lot of war. Uh, it's a lot of the team just not knowing where to go and what to do. Uh, on a whole, this was a decent issue. Four out of five. No, 3.5 out of 5. Uh, it, it was fun, but it wasn't great. And I will pick out my picks of the week. Uh, this shouldn't be too hard. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that instead. Um, coming in at number 3 would be Superman Unchained issue number 3. Uh, solid issue. This comic is starting to get more and more uh, momentum. Which is good. I felt as though issue 2 was a little lacking in momentum. But this is definitely getting the momentum. Uh, beautiful art. Scott Snyder really telling a great story. Number 2 is Batwoman. <coughs> uh, touching, loving story between characters. Pick it up. And lastly, you know it's going to be Wonder Woman. Best comic this week. And quite possibly the best comic this month. It really was that good. <coughs> News updates. Um... So, Ben Affleck is the new Batman. How do I feel about that? Hmm. 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 Um, let's break it down as good, bad, and ultimately what I decide. Point for Ben Affleck. He is an Academy Award winning director. Uh, he's been in fantastic movies. Uh, he's a good actor. There's, there's no denying that. Bad. Um, he doesn't strike me as Bruce Wayne. I don't know if he has that edginess to him to become Bruce Wayne. Good. 
Um, you know what? He's very diverse with his ability to act. He can act in clerks or mall rats and then go and act in the town. So maybe he does have that diversity. Plus, also, if they, they, they just show this, keep the mask on the whole time, I, th I think that will that will help. Though they will sprinkle a lot of Bruce Wayne on there. Bad. Daredevil. To be fair, though, Daredevil was just a bad movie. I don't know. I don't think he did a bad job acting in it. It was just a bad movie. Good. Ben Affleck is an incredibly well-known celebrity. It will pull in and attract people to watch the movie. On a whole, how do I feel about this? Sure. Why not? I'm... Um, at this point, I'm open for them trying anything. If it works out, then that's great. If it doesn't, shit happens. Um, I wonder how old Ben Affleck is. He, he must be early 40s? Late 30s, early 40s? Um, is he getting a little old for the role of Batman? Um, to be fair, I, I, I'm, I'm actually really quite alright with this. I'm not quite as worried as a lot of people. A lot of people overreacted about... Heath Ledger being Joker, too. And while Heath Ledger is not my favorite Joker, it's, that goes to Mark Hamill, uh, he did a pretty good job at what he did. Oh, Ben Affleck is uh, 41. Uh, so he did a pretty good job at what he did. So, again, I think it's best for us to wait to see what happens. Affleck wouldn't have been my first choice, but I think he'll take the role seriously, and I think he'll put a lot of passion into it. Speaking of Batman, I've been watching a lot of the Beware the Batman Love it. Good show. You know what I love about it? It's the fact that it does things differently. It's not falling back on using the Joker or the Riddler or Robin and all the cliches that Batman has used. We're getting new villains or villains that are obscure, like Magpie. Most people don't know who Magpie is. I do. Read John Byrne's Superman. You will know who Magpie is. Professor Pig, who's only showed up in really Grant Morrison's run on Batman, but again, obscure character. Humpty Dumpty. I mean, these are all characters that really aren't used that much. Uh, or our originals for the show, and it's good to see that. I like the fact that it's taking itself uh, in a different direction, using Tatsu as an ally, uh, how Alfred's portrayed him. Once you release all conceptions of how Batman is originally supposed to be taken, then uh, you can enjoy the show. And Teen Titans Go, I, I'm really thoroughly enjoying, too. Teen Titans Go is really fun. Um, any ways of video games? finally freaking beat Sonic 06. Ugh. Ugh. I'm glad I'm done. Now I just have to catch up with Sonic Generations and I'll be all set for Sonic Lost World. I got Pikmin 3 playing it. Loving it! And today, after I do this video, there is going to be new Super Luigi U coming out in hard copy, which is what I pre-ordered. Gonna go get that. Oh, and I've been playing Mario and Luigi's Dream Team, which has been uh, um, mm, 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 fantastic. Uh, the year Luigi has been good to me. I haven't played uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon yet. It's sitting there. Um, how I'm gonna? This is my game setup now because now I got Sonic 06 out of the way. I'm like, the world is my oyster. Um, not including all the games I have on pre-order, just the games I have now. I'm going to play through Pikmin 3. That's my next one that i got to beat. Um, uh, but I'm going to take a break from it today to play some new Luigi U. After uh, console games, I'm going to get those out of the way. going to play some Sonic Generations and get that out of the way. And then now it's, it's just catching up with the small games like Sonic and Secret Rings, um, Real Steel 2, uh... Lego Mario 2, and Lego Mario, that would be awesome, Lego Mario, Lego Batman 2, uh, catching up uh, with Bayonetta and stuff like that, and then, you know, the Metal Gear Solid and um, Devil May Cry stuff, so catching up with stuff like that. Uh, for handhelds, I'm going to beat the shit out of Mario and Luigi Dream Team, get back on to Project Cross Zone, because I stopped that chapter 10, so I'm about a quarter of the way through the game. Going to start back on that, once I'm done with that, then I'm going to go back to Luigi uh, New Moon. Although by that time, Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds will be out and I will be going, Oh, I'm going to be so pumped. I'm so pumped for Link Between Worlds. That's not even to talk about all the other games coming out like Batman Arkham City, uh, which 
uh, Arkham City, Blackgate, Origin, whatever. Uh, which I am... It's Batman, Blackgate. Is it Batman, Arkham City, Blackgate? Or is it Batman, Blackgate, Arkham City, Origins? Whatever. Um, I'm getting both the handheld and the uh, console version of it. So it's going to be good. I have a lot of games coming out. From Pokemon, to Batman, to Mario, to Luigi, to Zelda, and to Assassin's Creed. Oh, my list at GameStop is ridiculous. Um... Uh, what else is going on? Getting ready to move, find a place, which is awesome, which you guys know. Um, so I gotta pack up some more. I just been lazy. Just been lazy. My bachelor party is coming out in two weeks. My fiance just had hers last night. She got in at like two in the morning. I'm like asleep. She sent a text going, and I got it this morning. I know you're asleep. I'm home, safe, had fun. Good night. <laughs> I I crashed last night. Uh, but nothing really else that I can talk about. I, I know there's probably more on my mind, but I'm just not thinking. So, might as well pick up the questions and slash comments for this week. Um, for those of you who knew my videos, basically what I do is I, whatever comments or questions were asked in the previous video, I answer them. Plain, flat, simple. Um, I find it an easy way for me to interact with you guys, and it's fun. So, Let's go over to video manager. My computer is just being a little slow right now. Here we go. So we have 32 comments. Let's uh let's hit them all, my friends. Uh Okay, so Joshua Hayes, if DC gave you a choice to di uh, decide to turn a bat hero bad and a villain to good, which hero would become the villain and vice versa. I always felt Catwoman turning back to heel would be interesting and believable for a character move. Of course, she still toe the line between good and evil sometimes. And I also wonder what Bat character would be written to commit a stunning betrayal of Batman. Uh, what villain would I like to turn good? Riddler. Riddler, yeah. I'll go with Riddler. Um, I liked when Riddler had his memory loss and was kind of a good guy. I would go with Riddler because intellectually he would be fun, but I would also like him to still be tempted by the dark side from time to time, but still kind of be a legitimate kind of businessman. Um, although it's kind of been done before, but I would do that. Um, uh, and then I would probably, if I had someone go bad, ultimately, and, uh, not turn back. Oh my, that's tough. That's real tough. What Batverse character? Oh my. Something shocking that would betray Bruce. I don't know. I don't know if I would want to turn any of the people bad. I mean, even Catwoman I like as a good guy more now. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to get back on you on that. That's a good question. Uh, because, see, Batman has such a strong family that any betrayal would have just gone, like, crazy. It would have been shocking, and there would be no return from it. You can't do Dick because it's Dick Grayson, and Tim Drake wouldn't be believable. Um, Jason Todd, th that would just be too easy to do. Plus, it's already been done. Alfred would break everyone's hearts. So and so forth. So I, I don't know who I would turn bad. Uh, how about this? I would put Jim Gordon and Batman at odds ends again. I would have Jim Gordon find out that his daughter was Batgirl. Similar to how that episode from the animated series. And him hunt down Batman. Don't kill Batgirl. Just have him find out. Him disapprove and hunt down Batman. Start turning Jim Gordon evil. But it's definitely putting him at odds ends with Batman. Jim Thomas... Um, Jim Thomas uh, response to that question, so that was between him. Uh, Joshua Hayes, also, what 3D covers standard for Villain Month? Uh, or is there a chance small comic shops will only get the standard 2D non-legit comics? Uh, I don't know exactly how the distribution is going to be going for the 3D comics. Hopefully I get nothing but the 3D comics, because I heard they look really stunning, but then again, that's a, that might just be them trying to sell me on it um i don't know what the distribution is going to be uh jim thomas andrew you don't have to be sorry i'm just glad you uploaded all 
and love your videos. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I know. It's just tough transitioning from place to place and jobs to job and trying to find time for everything. But don't worry. I will always put videos up. Eric Simmons. Andrew, did you see The Wolverine? Your opinions on it if you did. No, I haven't. I just watched Thor for the first time on DVD. I want to see The Wolverine. I just don't have anyone to go with and I'm not going to go alone. Maybe I can convince someone to go on Thursday with me. Uh, Nick Lenz. Hey, Andrew, three questions for you. First, have you thought of reading Wolverine in the X-Men comic? I have thought about it. It's not far enough that I can't start picking it up. But at the same time, is it really something I want to read? I don't know. I might pick it up sometime in the future. We'll see. Wolverine and the X-Men is really good read. Second, did you know Jason Aaron is not only the current writer on Thor God of Thunder, but also on Wolverine and the X-Men? And also a brief period on, uh, time on Wolverine. Third, are you looking forward to Villains Month? Um, for your second question, I did not know Jason Aaron was on all three comics. Uh, as for Villains Month, I am 100% looking forward to it. I think it's great. I think it's great how DC every year since the new Fix U has done something to bring in new readers. Whether it's um, the new 52 itself, or Zero Month, or Villain Month. It's a nice way to bring new readers in. Uh, second question. Two other things. First, uh, can you read uh, can you read most of the Captain America series in trade paperback form along with the Wolverine, Iron Man, Thor, and Fantastic Four? Though it might take you a while because there's a lot of graphic novels. Uh, well, I, I might be picking up Captain America and read that in trade. I do have some Wolverine trades that I might read. I just haven't got along to them. I do have... I don't know if you guys can see it. You probably can't. Uh, I do have a stack of books up there. That just stuff I have to read that I've been lazy about doing. Anywho, um, next thing by Nick Lenz. Let's see. Second, Wakanda is the home of Black Panther, but he is not the current ruler of it. His sister is. His sister was first introduced. Uh, in Black Panther Volume 4, and she has been the ruler of Wakanda since uh, the Fantastic Four story arc by Jonathan Hickman. Thank you for clarifying that. I did not know him that. I thought it was a Black Panther that ruled, but I guess he got dethroned by his sister. Uh, Nick Lentz, the current writer on Avengers and New Avengers. Oh. Uh, Felipe is responding to Blue Lantern of 2814. I didn't read Threshold since it ended. Is Blue Beetle coming back to Earth? Probably most of his books are canceled. Uh, Blue Beetle is going back to Earth. Yeah, he was teleported back to Earth. So don't worry, he will be back there. Uh, Mario Reyes, are you, uh, you need to get the SH Figure Arts Red Ranger. is awesome. I am about this close to buying it online. I'm just going to wait till the next paycheck because... I had to drop a five hundred dollar deposit down for um, our videographer. So once I get the next paycheck, I'm gonna actually get two of them because they look really that good. Um, Sun Wukong six six six. I saw Innocenti was on Catwoman for November, but I'm worried instead of it being permanent, it's just going to be for a month because someone else is writing Batgirl for a month as well, and I don't think DC's stupid enough to take Gal Simone off it, especially with her writing another comic for them. But I'm hoping she's off the title and I can pick it up again. Yeah, I don't know if she's really truly off the title. I hope so, because John Lehman is writing that issue. So if she is off the title, that would be awesome. Hopeful thinking, fingers crossed. Fallout 3 Freak 1. Hey, Andrew, once again, congrats on your promotion. You deserve it. Thank you. I guess I speak for all of us when I say, Andrew, you're the best comic book reviewer. Oh, you don't have to say that. And I'm glad you continue your reviews and stuff no matter what. Big thanks. Uh, a big thank you for um, me and the rest of the subscribers. Have a nice day. Greetings from Germany. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Um, I'm sure I'm not the best reviewer out there. But I do like I do like what I do, and I do like the fact that I get to interact with you guys. My comic book brothers and sisters. Spidey Bat. Packers fan. I'm trying to picture that. Spider-Man, Batman, the Packers. Okay. Uh, honestly, I hope Red Hood 1 isn't the Joker. It feels too predictable. It's the Joker. It is. Felipe19991. Hey, Andrew. 
Uh, what you think of the role of Amanda Waller after Trinity War since all the Justice League ignores her? The Justice League of America ignores her. P.S. I was talking more Dr. Faith uh, appearing on Earth Prime. Oh. Uh, Dr. Faith appearing on Earth Prime. I'd rather keep him on Earth 2. As for Amanda Waller, I think she's going to continue with her Suicide Squad. That's probably what's going to happen in her being an absolute... Um, What's the what? nice word? Dick about trying to regulate superheroes. George Jones, if you were given the power by DC to wreck on any two things you disliked about the new 52, what would they be? Mine is Batman Forever giving up so much hate. There's a lot of dumb Batman Forever giving up so much hate. Oh, why is Batman Forever uh, given so much hate? Um, Batman Forever is given so much hate. I don't know if it's given hate. I think it's just dated. Uh, there's a lot of dumb things, but I kind of like it. Same as me. I enjoy it for what it's worth. It's an okay film. It's funny, too. It's really Batman and Robin that's given so much hate. Two things to recon from DC. One is I would have it that uh, Damien was not Robin. He was not in New 52 at all. It was actually Tim that was Robin. Uh, I would have done that and have Grant Morrison finish his stories off in another world. Um, in his own little separate corner of the DC multi-universe. That would be one thing. Next, I would have the new Teen Titans still exist. Dick Grayson still gets the team together at some point. Cyborg takes a break from the Justice League to help out. Something along that line. And so those stories still exist. Those would be my two retcons. If not the Teen Titans thing, Superman was still married to Lois Lane. But besides that, those would be my two retcons. Hey, uh, Lester. Here we go. Andrew. What I meant for going all the way and exploring Alan Scott's sexuality is for the DC Universe showing him going physical with another man. Okay. Uh, that they do show Batwoman being intimate with other women, and I think, depending on how it's done, of course, that if they don't do the same with Alan Scott, it would be a devil's standard. I would disagree with that. Because, see, Alan Scott is a completely different character from... Um, Kane. She is very much an affectionate character who is very dependent on her lovers, where Alan Scott's a very type A character who needs to kind of just... He, he hasn't even accepted the fact that his lover's dead. Uh, and he's so consumed and focused with his work. And I think he's using his work as an excuse not to be with another lover. Number two, the reason why I don't think he needs to get physical with another man for a while is because the guy's lover, fiance, just died. Give him some time to grieve. I, I would not want him to jump into another relationship and start banging someone just for the sake of it not being a double standard. To be realistic, give him some time to grieve. Maybe in two or three years, let's see him have a... Because two or three years in our world is like a month in my, uh, DC Universe. But have him get into a relationship then. But let the character grieve first before we see him being intimate. I don't think it's a simple standard. I think they're just telling a different story with that character. Um, I think people are focusing too much on him being homosexual. It's okay. I mean, I think they're focusing too much on it. Let the character just be a great character and have him tell the story. It, th his sexuality does not have to be the prime focus of everything. Um, I think that's an important thing to remember. I have a friend. Actually, I've I have a friend who's gay that reads comic books. Uh, not quite as much as he used to. And uh, he said he doesn't even focus on the fact that Alan Scott is gay. And he cares more about the character for the character's sake. I also have a friend whose best friend is lesbian that loves Batwoman. And it's the complete opposite for her. She loves Batwoman because she can identify with her so much as a lesbian character. But my other friend who... Loves Alan Scott. Actually, it's kind of ironic. Before the New 52, Alan Scott was his favorite character. Um, doesn't really care either which way if he's gay or not. So I don't think it's a double standard. I don't think people care as much in the community if he goes off and it has to be the same. It, they don't have to be on the same level. Batwoman doesn't have to be on the same level as Alan Scott. Alan Scott could take his relationship and how he views things this way, and Batwoman can take it that way. Cool. Uh, that's just what I think. 
I, I love both characters, though. I think they're awesome. Uh, just playing with the idea of a woman with a woman, but not a man with a man is repulsive. No, I don't think that's the case. I don't think it's the case at all. Uh, just saying that this is something that should be considered natural and not taboo. I don't think it is taboo. I think uh, DC has a lot of gay, lesbian, and even transgender characters. Uh, look at Shiny Knight. Shiny Knight is a uh, transgender character. Uh, she is considered both man and woman, and there are references to her um, sleeping with Exodus, who is a female character. It's not considered taboo there. Uh, I think you're you're focusing too much on Alan Scott's relationship and comparing it to others, and um, I really think, and I'm saying this all respectfully. Everyone has their own opinion. I really think that every different character, whether gay, straight, uh, lesbian, um, transgender, whatever it is, has different pacings with it. Um, I know a gentleman that I used to work with down at Saba Shop who is gay, but he would never have gay sex. He would ne not gay sex. He would never have sex, period. He just didn't like it. He didn't like it with a man. He didn't like it with a woman, but he identified himself as gay. Um, is it a double standard? If that was in a comic, I don't think so. That's the character's choice. So, I, I obviously, I think DC is trying to handle things in a different way, but I, I don't think James Robinson is trying to set up some kind of double standard or whatever when he was writing Alan Scott beforehand. Again, this is just me thinking that everyone's entitled to their own opinion. One more thing. I'm hoping the Kree Nipper finally shows up in the Arkham game since Jack Ryder is already there. Also, I'm surprised he hasn't been betrayed already, given the fact that not only Paul Dini is the one behind the stories in the games, but he's also that he was the one who wrote the episode and the character back in the anime series. I think the Creeper would just be out of place, though, in the Arkham games, because he's a magical character and they want to say the realism, kind of, in the Arkham games. Evil Mastermind, Andrew, two questions. First question. Uh, do you think there'll ever be a live-action Aquaman movie will ever be made? Uh, it's a possibility. Anything's possible. I, I feel as though it's more on the unlikely side. At least let's see how the Justice League movie goes first before that happens. Second question. Who would you have as a villain for the first Flash movie? I would have Grodd. If they're doing a TV sh show first and then the movie, I would just have all the rogues because I'm sure they would be introduced in the TV show. The Rogues. Uh, P.S. I'm no longer Puppy Killer 97. I'm Evo Mastermind. Uh, I decided to change my YouTube username because every time I left a comment, I got replied back of what the fuck is with your username. I hope you didn't take what I was saying wrong. Uh, Puppy Killer 97, you can keep that as your username. Uh, if I offended you in any way, I didn't mean to. Um, if it's other people, then screw them. Screw them. Uh, but. I'm sorry if I upset you at all. Not, not what I wanted to do. Um, I just thought it was such a crazy name. Uh, Andrew, are you going to pick up DC Universe versus He-Man Masters Universe? I wasn't originally, but now I'm kind of tempted. Uh, was Fury of the Firestorm, uh, the Fury of Firestorm, the Nuclear Man, a good enough to pick up for the Nuclear Two? It got canceled. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was worth. I felt as though it lost themed towards the middle. Dan Jurgens was uh, had a fun take on it. Um, I would say pick it up on your off time. Um, I think it's definitely the my favorite definitive version of the character of Firestorm. The stories themselves were good. But just that. Uh, Lester, Andrew, I uh, found some Wonder Woman shorts uh, for DC Nation and sent them to you. Check your messages. Thank you. I will. I never check my messages uh, uh, anymore. Uh, Barstone Jackson, have you put on weight? Uh, no, I actually have been losing a little weight. Uh, I've been going to the gym a lot lately, and I've been working on, um, putting on more muscle. Not much there, but putting on more muscle and, uh, losing weight. If you actually, uh, do I have any pictures? I don't. Um, pictures of me from Water Country this year. I, I have my, my pecs are a lot better, my shoulders are a lot better, um, I'm just working on my abdomen region, but, um, no, I think I've been putting on more muscle, if anything, on, if there's any weight that's getting put on, it's muscle weight, which is good, because I stopped going to the gym for a while, and 
I did put on weight, but that was a while ago. That was like a year ago. Uh, it was right after college and right before I got into my job. And then finally I decided to sign back up in the gym because I've always gone to the gym, but there was like that year where I kind of stopped. So now that I've gone back to the gym, um, I'm getting in a lot better shape, a lot better shape. I feel as though I'm in some of the best shape I've been in in years. So if I look like I'm getting on, putting on weight, it's probably because I'm again putting on more muscle that I'm putting on fat. I could, everyone could, you know, stand to lose some weight. Well, not everyone, but I mean, hey. Uh, Truth Addict 11, congrats on your promotion. I don't mind to wait to see a video. They are enjoyable and turn me to books I might otherwise ignore, like Gal Simone's Red Sonia. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad that you gave it a try because issue two was awesome. Uh, Mario Reigns, what do you think of them casting Ben Affleck as Batman? I want Bradley Cooper as Batman. Um, kind of gave my, uh, my thoughts already, but should be interesting. Bent Black Gypsy, what's your thoughts on new Lobo redesign? I think it's awful. I have no idea what DC was thinking. He's not, uh, he should not look like a skinny anime villain. Uh, I like the old Lobo design more, but... I will give this one a chance. Apparently, there's a story behind it. The Lobo we've been seeing in the DC Universe, like the stupid dumbass one from Stormwatch and, and Deathstroke. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Rob Liefeld. Uh, apparently, that's not the real Lobo, and this is. If there's a good story behind it, I will back it up, but I do like the the Kiss Lobo. Uh, X Valis. If Ben Affleck is playing Batman, Batman is supposed to be instill fear in his enemies. I look at Ben Affleck, and I think I could kick his ass. What do you think? I think I'm Ben Affleck. Um, I think Ben Affleck is a multi-talented actor. Maybe he can pull off that badass role. We don't know. I don't think he's been given too too much of a chance. Um, although, to be fair, have you watched The Town? He was kind of a badass in that. Um, Batman Beyond for the win. Have you read uh, any of the Kick-Ass miniseries? And what are your thoughts? If so, I have not. I am going to be picking up Kick-Ass to read them at some point. Just haven't yet. Also, have you read Scott Pilgrim? No, but I saw the movie. I want to read Scott Pilgrim awesome, but again, time more than anything. But I will eventually. Those are the comments for the weeks. If you have any questions or comments in the future, just push them down there and I will answer them. And we will have fun and have a good time. Uh, but I'm going to end this video here because GameStop's now open and I'm going to go get my Luigi U. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.